Dyspareunia, also known as painful sex, is a common but poorly understood problem affecting 7.5% of sexually active women aged between 16 and 74 years. Painful sex or pain after sex is most common in women aged 55 to 64 and those aged between 16 years to 24 years. So today we're tackling a topic that many find challenging, but it's incredibly important to address it. Postcoital pain or pain during or after sex. So let's dive into the potential causes of painful sex or pain after sex, the different ways the condition can be treated and when you should seek medical attention if you experience this. But make sure you stick around to the end because I'll be doing a Q&A with frequently asked questions around this topic and you don't really want to miss that one. Hey everyone, welcome back to Ask Away Health with Dr. Sylvia. I'm a consultant in general practice and here we share health information that's not just relevant but relatable to your own life experience. Postcoital pain can be attributed to a variety of different causes and each might require different treatment approaches. So here are some of the main causes. First, infections. This includes sexually transmitted infections including chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes, which can cause pain both during and after sex. In addition, urinary tract infections a UTI can lead to pain during urination and sex because of inflammation and irritation around the urinary tract that is so close to the opening of the vagina. Next, pelvic inflammatory disease or PID. This is an infection of the female reproductive organs and it's often caused by untreated STIs or not treating them properly. It can result in very bad pain both during and after sex. So next, let's look at hormonal changes. We can start with menopause. Here, you have reduced estrogen levels that can cause both vaginal dryness and thinning of the vaginal and vulval tissue, which leads to discomfort during and after sex. It's also possible to experience painful sex around the postpartum period. And this is because you have hormones fluctuating after child birth during breastfeeding that can lead to vaginal dryness and sensitivity. What about conditions in which there is hormone imbalance? A good example is PCOS which is polycystic ovary syndrome. It can also affect vaginal lubrication and elasticity leading to painful sex. Another reason for vaginal dryness that isn't a health condition is from insufficient lubrication. Insufficient lubrication can happen from a lack of arousal or not enough foreplay or some medication. These drugs affect sexual desire. They can decrease lubrication and make sex painful. Some examples are antidepressant medicines, drugs used to treat high blood pressure, some sedatives, antihistamines used for treating hay fever and allergies, and certain hormonal birth control pills. So next, let's look at another big group that can be responsible for painful sex, and it's physical conditions. One is endometriosis. In endometriosis, tissue that's very similar to the inner womb lining grows out Inside the womb. This can cause deep pelvic pain during sex. Another condition is known as vaginismus and what's going on here is that there is involuntary spasms of the muscles in the vaginal wall which can make penetration painful and lead to lingering discomfort even after sex. Other physical conditions that are related to experiencing pain during and after sex include uterine prolapse, a retroverted womb or bent or tilted womb. Check out this video here that I've just recently published that talks about that condition, having uterine fibroids or irritable bowel syndrome, pelvic floor conditions, adenomyosis, which is when tissue that is normally found in the inner womb lining is found in the muscle of the womb, hemorrhoids and ovarian cysts. Also in this category of physical conditions causing painful sex, there could also be trauma or scarring from previous medical treatment. So for this, think about scarring from pelvic surgery like a hysterectomy. It can also happen after cancer treatments like radiation and chemotherapy which causes changes that eventually end up making sex painful. The next category is psychological factors. Let's start with stress and anxiety. Emotional factors can contribute to physical tension and pain during sex. Did you know that our pelvic floor muscles tend to tighten in response to stress in our lives? This of course can contribute to pain during sex. And if you're wondering where your pelvic floor muscles are, if I asked you just while you were sitting on the toilet passing urine to stop and hold your wee, what do you squeeze? 
those are your pelvic floor muscles. Factors affecting our emotions, like concerns about physical appearance, fear of intimacy or relationship problems, can also contribute to a low level of arousal and result in discomfort or pain. And of course, there is past trauma. A history of sexual abuse or trauma can result in chronic pain issues related to the act of intercourse. Number five, allergic reactions. So here we're talking about things like a latex allergy. Some women may be allergic to latex in sexual products like condoms or other products or other materials in lubricants which can lead to irritation and cause pain that happens during sex and carries on afterwards. There are also other personal care or hygiene products that you might be sensitive to, for example, soaps, lotions, even spermicides that can also lead to discomfort with sex. So in terms of managing painful sex or postcoital pain, it involves a combination of medical and home remedies or things that you can do by yourself. So let's look at some examples. For medical treatments, this can include one, antibiotics. So for bacterial infections like with a urinary tract infection or some sexually tra tract infections, antibiotic treatment should help to heal the condition and the pain should settle down afterwards. Sometimes it might be the medical treatment necessary is hormonal therapy. So this can include vaginal estrogen creams or hormone replacement therapy that's taken by mouth or through the skin using a patch or gel or spray for menopausal symptoms. Don't forget pain control, pain management. Over-the-counter medications like paracetamol or acetaminophen or Tylenol, ibuprofen or stronger medication that are prescribed described by the doctor can be helpful for some types of acute pain after sex. Okay, so what about home remedies? That is things that you can do at home to reduce the impact of painful sex. First is lubrication. So this can be using water-based lubricants to reduce friction during sex. Taking warm baths if you have tight or stiff pelvic floor that might help to relax the muscle. If you have tight or stiff pelvic floor muscles, soaking in a warm bath can soothe muscle tension and pain. Related to these are Kegel exercises because strengthening the pelvic floor muscles can help with pain from conditions like vaginismus. Please check out this video here where I talk a lot more about pelvic floor exercises. The next thing that you can do at home is make sure you remain well hydrated. This can help to prevent urinary tract infections and also promote your overall Role for general health. There's also an important role for lifestyle adjustments. For example, how you communicate with your sexual partner. It's really important that you're discussing any pain or discomfort with your partner so that you can find positions that are mutually satisfying. Knowing about the problem means that they can also provide support and it doesn't create tension in your relationship. Next, relaxation techniques. Practices like yoga or meditation to reduce stress and muscle tension. What about when to seek help? So it's so important to know when postcoital pain needs medical advice. So seek help if you experience persistent pain. That means pain that continues after you've had sex or that keeps on happening each time you have sex. If you're experiencing severe discomfort, this is intense pain that interferes with other activities or just the quality of your daily life. Any other associated symptoms. So additional symptoms can include experiencing unusual vaginal discharge, bleeding, fever, a foul odor from your genital area. It's also important if you're experiencing pain that's impacting your mental health and causing significant anxiety that type of emotional distress should be discussed with your doctor. Another instance, of course, is if you're using the over-the-counter treatments and tried these home remedies and not getting any relief from them at all. Okay, so let's go to the question and answer section. I've got a few questions that people commonly ask around the topic of pain after sex or pain during sex. So the first one, how can I differentiate between normal discomfort and a problem that needs medical attention? So occasional mild discomfort that quickly goes away might be experienced maybe if you were not well lubricated or not well aroused but persistent severe or pain that's getting worse especially if other symptoms are present like a fever discharge means that you need to see a doctor 
promptly. Number two, can postcoital pain affect my fertility? Well, some underlying causes of postcoital pain, and we've looked at them today, for example, sexual infections that are not treated or endometriosis can impact fertility. So it's important to address them, identify them, address them, and to treat them promptly. Number three, are there any preventive measures to avoid postcoital pain? So the answer to that is yes, there are a few things that you can do. Have regular sexual screenings, use lubricants if you're experiencing vaginal dry dryness, maintain good personal hygiene, stay hydrated and it's really important to have an open communication with your partner so that they are supportive and this symptom is not driving a wedge between you because that can cause more emotional distress. Number four, can postcoital pain be a sign of a serious condition? Yes, it can indicate a serious problem underlying. Serious infections like PID, endometriosis, or even early signs of cancer. If PID is not treated properly, it could lead to blocked tubes and infertility in future. So it's important to seek medical advice to have a thorough evaluation so that we identify what is responsible. Is it normal to feel pain after sex occasionally? So this comes up quite a lot. Sex is supposed to be a pleasant, Pleasure, pleasurable activity but occasionally there might be a mild discomfort that should settle very quickly so it's not a common occurrence to experience pain during or after sex but mild episodes may happen especially if you're not well lubricated or some people have rough sex and that can be uncomfortable but if you're having recurrent or severe pains you need to be seen by a doctor can emotional factors really cause physical pain after sex Absolutely. Stress, anxiety, and relationship issues can contribute to physical symptoms by causing muscle tension and reducing arousal, which leads to pain. Next, how can I talk to my partner about this issue? I've said it a few times already that open communication is really crucial, but you need to explain to your partner your experience is not as a result of their actions, especially if it's not as a result of rough sex, but it is a medical issue that needs addressing. So encourage mutual support. Let them know what treatments you're having, what conversations you're having with your doctor. Make them part of the experience and their support can be very important for you to recover. And next, are there specific tests I should ask my doctor about? Well, your doctor might recommend tests like pelvic exams or um, examinations, ultrasound scans, tests for infections, hormone levels to determine the underlying cause of pain. Remember, there are different causes. So depending on the conversation that you have, they can review and request different tests to work out what is going on. Thanks for joining me today to discuss painful sex or having pain after sex. I'm hopeful that you understand a bit more about the condition and recognize when to seek medical attention. And you know that seeking medical attention quickly is really important to your overall health and well-being. If you have any further questions or you want to share your experience, hit me up in the comments section. I always love to hear from you guys. Remember to like this video and of course share it with somebody in your network who might find it useful. Go on and click that subscribe button right now if you've not done it already and then come and join me on this video. I'll see you there.